Thanks for checking out One Church. If you're new to the church or want to learn more about us, you can always go to IamOneChurch.com. Now, here's this week's service.
To the one who is a rescue my soul. 
Oh, 
to go through today's battles is all found in how faithful God has been. Time and time again, he's led you through. I love in the word it says, he, God declares about himself. He says, I am the Lord God and I change not. And Jesus says this in the New Testament, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let me just tell you the confidence I need for today is hidden in a testimony from my yesterday. And I'll just say this, that if you want to be depressed and worried and anxious, think about all of your disappointments. Think about all your failures. Think about all your shortcomings. But if you want to begin to take on the victorious attitude that Jesus wants us to have, just spend a moment thinking about how he's never failed you. He's never let you down. He's always seen you through. Come on, somebody. And that's the reason why we sing. And that's the reason why we praise. Well, hey, if you're here joining us for the first time, we're so thankful that you came truly from the bottom of our hearts. We believe that you're here because we've been praying for you. We've been believing God for you to come. Whenever you came in this morning, you should have received a worship guide that looks like this. And inside it is going to tell you more about us, but we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Can you take a moment and text the keyword, hey, to 903-634-7135. And we'd love to meet you immediately following the service. Put a free gift in your hand and answer any questions questions that you might have. Can I pray as we continue our time together? Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. And God, I thank you that the confidence we need to for our present battle is hidden in a past testimony. So God, we declare if you did it then, you'll do it now. God, we thank you that you're the God who still does miracles. You're the way maker. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody who believed it said, amen, amen. Well, hey, you're joining us on a very special Sunday. Uh, today is child dedication. Uh, could I have my families come up on stage um, that are dedicating their children? And I love child dedication Sunday. It's just our time to declare as a church family that we're going to raise our kids in the house of God and, and bring them before the Lord for a blessing. Amen. 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 Look at all these awesome families. You know, this is the thing is, is that we, uh, we, I love child dedication because what it is, is it's saying this. It's not saying that this is salvation comes to the kid. We believe that, that that is something that will happen later on. But what it is, is these parents are, are making a brave step and saying, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I've heard the saying many times, it takes a, a village to raise a child. I believe it takes a, a church to raise a child. And that's what we're saying together as a church family is we're saying, hey, we're committed to be with you. We're committed to pray with you. We're com Come on, because they're going to need help in the journey, right? And all the parents who have grown kids said amen, right? Uh, I'm sure my parents needed people on the journey with me. I was pretty much perfect, but <laughs> there was a, a, a one, maybe two bumpy days. So, uh, but, you know, that, that's the thing. And, and I love this because child dedication comes... Uh, really, we get this from a, a woman named Hannah, and Hannah uh, was believing God for a kid, and 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 the reason, and she's praying and she's asking God for a kid, and I love this because you, you learn something is that God grants her what she asks for, and the first thing that you learn is this: that kids are a gift from God. They're a gift from God, and can I just tell you that God? There's going to be moments and there's going to be times when you think, am I the right parent? Right. Am I the right parent? And can I tell you that God has entrusted you. God has entrusted you because you are the perfect parent to raise that child. You have everything you need and everything it takes to raise that child. And there's going to be times that you need some advice, and that's what we're here for. And so just to pray for you and champion you. But I love this. that God, God Hannah prayed for this child, and God granted it. Uh, her this child and then and then she said this God I'm going to bring it back I'm going to bring him back to you and said oh my Lord as uh, my soul lives my Lord I am the woman who stood before you here praying for this child for this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him therefore I have also lent him to the Lord as long as he lives he shall be lent to the Lord so they worship the Lord there the second thing you need to know is that every one of these children have a calling. And that's what we're doing. You're raising world changers. You're raising world changers. Never forget that. This, this moment, we're saying, God, help me raise this child 
to fulfill her purpose. Because every child, every person has a purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to pray. God, we just thank you, Lord. We declare yes. that these are God's kids. Lord, I thank you that even from a young age that they're going to dream dreams. Lord, they're going to prophesy. Lord, I thank you that they're going to come to know you at a young age. That, Lord, they'll be sensitive to your voice. Lord, I declare that they are the pastors of their schools. That, Jesus, they lead people to you. While they're even on the playground, God, I thank you that they are going to be used as a mouthpiece of heaven. That, God, I thank you that they'll declare the good works of God even to their teachers and faculty. That, God, I thank you that, Lord, I thank you that the nation's greatest leaders are right here the world changers lord we declare psalm 91 over them that no evil shall come upon them no plague shall come neither dwelling but with a long life you will satisfy them and show them your salvation lord we declare over these parents that they are anointed to be these kids parents that god i thank you that they are the right people yes. that they carry a grace yes. gift on them for yes. the sweet babies lord that they've got the right answers that holy spirit that you're guiding them lord and what to do in the hard places when it gets difficult and that father i thank you that husbands and wives are united together. God, I thank you for these kids and that God, I thank you that they are going to declare your good works in Jesus name. Can you say amen? Nope. She's like, she wanted the microphone, but she's like, no, amen. Well, hey, can you guys give it up for them as they go back to their seats? You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. You guys can go down this way or this way, either way. Well, awesome. Well, hey, we're so glad that you are here. I truly believe that Pastor Brian's got in a phenomenal word. And can you take the next 10 seconds, greet someone around you. We're so glad that you came to church. doing good? Good. It's good to see you. Uh, My name is Brian Sparks. I'm the lead pastor here at One Church, and we're so honored to have uh, each and every one of you here. Uh, We have three services, three services, and so uh, if this one's a little full for you, uh, you can come to 845 or our 1145, uh, and we got some room for a little little bit of room in there. So if you like a uh, one or two seats, uh, but that, that won't last long because we believe that uh, God wants a full house. Amen? Amen? And so we're glad to have you here today, and uh, God is doing so many great things. Uh, we had an awesome time at our marriage conference. Come on. So many good things happened at our marriage conference this last weekend. Uh, and if you missed that, uh, we will have another one uh, next year. Uh, somebody said, are you doing another one soon? And I was like, no, well, we're going to wait. Uh, but it was really great, and, uh, and God did some great things in Sulphur Springs and here at the Caddo Mills campus. And so while I'm saying that, come on, let's give it up for our Sulphur Springs campus. Come on. We love you, Sulphur Springs. Doing an awesome job there. And, uh, and then, come on, we're not just there. We're all over, all over the world. People are watching. Come on, give it up for everybody. Come on, we love you. If you're ever in the area, I promise you, drop by. Uh, this, this is the greatest church, and they will make you feel right at home. Uh, one thing that I always have people say is, man, that's a friendly church. You're, you're going you're gonna to get greeted, okay? And that's, and that's just the way it is. And so, uh, But we've got some uh, awesome stuff going on. Come on, guys. Where are all my men at? Men, where you at? Come on. Hey, we got a men's lunch. Come on. We got a men's lunch coming up on June 1st. Uh, and and uh, I, I don't know, uh, we have sisterhood events all the time, uh, and I have guys come up and say, well, what about us? Well, what about us? Well, now we got a building. Come on. So we're going to do, do a little bit of a man, man thing, and uh, we call it manhood or brotherhood. I don't know what we'll call it, uh, but, but uh, we're going we're gonna to just come together, hang out, and uh, uh, we'll have a little bit of worship, a, a little bit of word, but a lot of fun. And here's the thing is that you have to register for this event. Go to IamOneChurch.com slash men. It is completely free, and we are feeding you. And you're going, well, what are we feeding you? It don't matter. Two things. Free, good. That's all you need to know, right? It's going to be good, and it's going to be free, and so, but you do have to, don't, you have to register, okay? And the reason why, don't show up with 10 people. 
and not register, right? Because you're going to be eating saltine crackers in the chair going, man, well, I wish I could have had some of that. And the truth is, is that you should have registered. So uh, it's 100% free. It won't take you very long. Just go to imonechurch.com slash men. We're doing it from 1030 to 1230. Uh, we got some cornhole going on. We got some giant Jenga going on. It's going to be a good time. And uh, it's, I, I believe it's going to be great. Come on, guys. Can we show up in force? The girls pack out the GMA. Surely we can fill up this room. Come on. And, uh, and so let's just at least, let's start there, okay? So uh, June 1st, go, uh, sign up. Uh, I don't do 6.30. Come on, I grew up in churches where it's like, we're going to have a 6.30 a.m. breakfast for the men. And I'm like, who gets up at 6.30 on a Saturday, number one? And then they always throw in the, and bring your tools. So I got to get up at 6.30 and work, and you're going to feed me a burrito? Come on. No, I don't think so. So we're not doing that. No, it's not a bait and switch, guys. We're going to have some fun. So um, uh, we got that g get signed up. We've been in a series called It's Time. And the reason why we started this series is because uh, summer is quickly approaching. And how many of you know summer goes fast, right? Summer happens, and it just seems like it snowballs from there. And we are nearly six months into the year, and some of you haven't done what you said you were going to do at the beginning of the year. You haven't even started what you said that you were going to do. And the truth is, is some of you haven't started the things you've been saying you were going to do for five years. Ten years. Come on, let's be real. Fifteen years. And it's always someday and one day. Why do diets always start on Monday? Come on. And then they end on Tuesday. And it's, I'm going to start again on Monday, right? Because we end up putting things off. And I want you to know that it's time. It's time to stop putting off the things that God has called us to. And it's start, time to start doing what we're supposed to do. Okay? So that's why we're in this series. Uh, Pastor Nancy preached an awesome word uh, last week called, It's Time to Run. Come on. It's time to run the race that's set before you. And uh, I feel like i got a word for you that, that's going to help you run that race today because we're going to get rid of some weight. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 10. Matthew 24, verse 10. And Jesus is talking, and I'll give a little bit of context in a minute. Jesus says this, and then many will be offended. Come on. Many will betray one another and will hate one another. What an encouraging scripture. I'm glad I came to church today. <laughs> many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. If you're taking notes today, which I hope you are, because we have a saying here that paper never forgets, you can title today's message, It's Time to Get Over It. Wow. It's time to get over it. And Lord, right now, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you that every ear in here is open and receptive to hear your word. They didn't come to hear a word from me. They've come to hear a word from you. So Lord, use me to speak to the hearts and the lives of your people. Let every life be changed. Let no one leave the same. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. come on, just tell your neighbor, say, get ready. Come on, tell your second choice. Say, I said, get ready. <laughs> tell somebody behind you, uh, get ready. Come on, now just throw it together. Say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on. Get ready, get ready. I, even in the title, I got pushed back. Uh, so it's going to be good. Uh, you know, we were on family vacation, and when you're on vacation, everything is going good. You're having a good time. Uh, there's no worries. Come on, no stress. It's awesome. Uh, and, and I'm living my best life. And, and, uh, but we are like most of you. And when you go on family vacation, we have, we have pets. Right, and, and when you have pets, you can't just leave them. And so you have to have people come and stay at your house and take care of your pets. Uh, and, and that's the thing is, you, with pet ownership, there's a lot of responsibility, right? So, so here we are, and, and we got somebody. They're taking care of our, uh, our animals. Everything is going good. And uh, about three days into our vacation, I get a text uh, from the person that's watching our house. And uh, they, they send a picture of my front yard. And my front yard does not look like my front yard anymore, okay? Now, I'll tell you this. I'm not winning yard of the month, right? I, it's just I'm not in on that, right? I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not. But I will say this, that when I left my house, it did not have giant ruts in it. And now it had giant, four giant ruts in my front yard that were about 60 foot long. And I was like, what happened? She goes, I don't know what happened. I came home, and it's just this giant ruts in your yard. I'm not sure what happened. And I was like, okay. So I get home, and I got great neighbors. And my neighbor said, hey, uh, we saw the whole thing. So a semi-truck decided that it didn't want to go that way anymore and backed into your front yard. Yeah. Come on. 
Who does that? You're not on, it's not a golf cart, man. Like, backs a semi truck into my front yard, like over my water lines, like all that. Like, thank God that they didn't bust, but I'm sitting here and I'm going, man, what, what's going on? And he goes, but don't worry, I got the pictures of the trucking company. I got the truck number, I got the times, I got the dates. I'm like, man, you're a good neighbor, right? You're a good neighbor. And uh, like a good neighbor, Joe Bob is there. And so I was like, uh, man, Joe Bob, give me this. Okay, and so I got all of the information, and I called the company, and they said, okay, well, you need to email that to us, the pictures and the dates and the times and the truck number. So I did that, and they sent back, and they said, okay, we got all that information. Now you got to get us two bids uh, for how much it's going to cost to fix it. So you got to, you know, you're working with landscapers, and, and, uh, and so I'm waiting, on, I'm waiting on these bids to happen, right? And so uh, the bid finally shows up, and, and I get two bids because I have to get two bids, and they're both about 800 bucks. And uh, so I send the bids in. I mean, they're official, right? They're, they're, here's the bids. This is what it's going uh, to cost to fix the property, and they ghosted me. Like, no more responding. I call, no more response. I email, no more response. Nothing is, I, I keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on, and they stop responding completely. Now, at this point, I am ticked. Because to me, $800 is a lot of money. But to a big trucking company, $800 is no big deal. Like, just fix the problem. Fix the issue. Come on. You got stupid truck drivers. You need to fix the issue, right? And here's the deal is that I kept on, and this is what I did. Every morning when I drove to work, I would look at those ruts, and I would think about that stupid truck driver. And every evening I would come home and the first thing I saw was I saw my house with two or four big ruts in the front yard. And I would think about that stupid trucking company. And I, I kept doing this day after day. Every time I would leave, I would think about the trucking company. Every time I'd come home, I would think about the stupid truck driver. And here's the deal is that I did this for five months. Y'all, I'm telling you, I'm a person before I'm a pastor, right? And so I did this for five months, and every time I drive by, Crystal goes, when are you going to get out there and fix the ruts? I was like, I ain't fixing no ruts. I've been wrong, and I'm going to get them to fix the ruts, and it's just not happening. And finally, five months goes by, and God starts dealing with me, and they're like, really? Like, really? You're going to keep doing this? You're going to keep, you're going to keep driving by these ruts time after time after time. So I get out there with a shovel and I go to work and I get the ruts fixed. It takes me a few hours, but I finally get it all done. And, it, and Crystal drives in and she goes, you finally decided to fix the ruts, did you? <laughs> now I'm upset with her, right? So here's the thing is that what I realize now, now listen to me, what I realize now that I didn't realize then is that I let, I carried an offense for, for a trucking company for five months that never gave me a second thought. The only time that woman thought about me was enough to dodge my phone calls and my emails, and I was being affected by an offense, and they didn't even think about me. And some of you are carrying an offense for somebody. You're carrying an offense for something, and it's just like that. Every morning, you wake up, and you think about that offense, and every evening, you go to bed, and you think about that offense. Can I tell you? I can tell you right now. You go, well, I'm not offended at anything. The, you, you know if you're offended because you... you Tip, you, you, you say this, I'm going to drive around. I don't even want to look at their house. Right. I, I'm not even going to go to that store because I don't even want to see them. Right. You're carrying an offense. And the thing is, is the offense is, the, is only affecting you. You think it's bothering them, but the, the offense is only affecting you. And Jesus is talking here and he says this, in the last days, many will be offended. Yes. Many will be offended. Come on, we get offended about everything. Everything. You got a different opinion than me? I'm offended by that. You don't agree with me? I'm offended by that. How many of you in here would say this? You can raise your hand. How many would say, I, I know somebody who is easily offended? Just raise your hand. You know somebody who's easily offended? See, look at all those hands. If they knew you were raising your hand and thinking about them, they would be so offended right now. You'd be blacklisted. I mean, it's over, man. You're gone. You're dead to me, right? That's, that's what would happen. 
Now, here's the, now let me ask you this question. How many of, uh, of you in here would say, I am easily offended? Just, okay, very, a lot fewer hands, right? The reason why is, is because honesty is hard. And, and, and here's, here's, the, here's the truth is, is that when we look at other people's offenses, we can look at all of them and we think they're easily offended because their offenses are ridiculous. But our offenses are legitimate. Well, they shouldn't be offended by that. That's so silly. And you're carrying an offense for something that you think is completely legitimate. And Jesus is saying this. In the last days, many will be offended. And there's always another reason to be offended about something. You wake up in the morning, and there's a reason to get offended about something. You go to the grocery store, and there's a reason to be offended about something. You come to church, and there's a reason to be offended about something. And we're always walking around, and it seems like there's a pile of offense every Everywhere we go, and it's things like this, like we pick up that say, like they said. Well, I'm offended because they said. Did you hear what she said about me? Do you know what they said about my husband? You know what they said about my kids? Do you know what they said about, and you start going down the list, and it's they said, it's he said, it's she said, they said, it's always they, and we get offended by the things that they say, and what we end up doing is, is we say, I can't let this go because they said that, and it hurt my feelings, and I'm offended by that, so I'm just going to carry that around for a while. I just got this. It's mine. Don't worry about it. We walk along a little longer, and then we get into stuff like this. Well, I got overlooked. They didn't invite me to lunch. Girls' night without me. They overlooked me. She doesn't deserve that promotion. I deserve that promotion. He doesn't deserve that. I deserve that. I was overlooked, and now I go to work every day, and I am offended because you overlooked me. I'm the better candidate, so I'm just going to hold on to that one for a while. How about this one, man? This one one can be a real stinger sometimes, and we get offended by this. What about the truth? Because some of the most offensive things that somebody could ever say to you is the truth. And everybody, you're walking around going, I can't believe they said that. And they're thinking, man, I'm finally glad somebody told you your breath stank. And you need a Tic Tac, man, because you're about to kill me with your halitosis. And the truth hurts, and you're offended. And instead of getting a a breath mint, you pick up an offense and say, I'm going to hold on to that one for a while. And then we stumble across things like betrayal. And, and I, I was betrayed. And they said some stuff and they did some stuff behind my back that hurt me so much that I can't let it go. I can't get over it. I can't, I can't, I can't get over it. I can't let it go. And so I'm just going to hold on to this betrayal for just a little while because I, and I'm going to keep bringing it up and I'm going to keep living it over and over and over again because the offense is too big to let go and we're carrying these offenses. And the Bible says this, to run with endurance the race that is set before you. And most of us are trying to run around and run with a race of weight on our back of offense and we're carrying around these small offenses but small offenses get bigger and bigger and bigger and I can't do what I used to do and I can't go where I used to go and every time I, every time I walk I think about it because it's jabbing me in the back and I'm thinking about the offense and I wonder where my joy went and I wonder why I'm not happy anymore and I wonder why I'm not fulfilling my calling and my purpose anymore and I'm carrying a weight of offense I'm just going to hold on to it. It's my thing. And I wish I was talking to people, but Christians are some of the most offendable people on the planet. We enjoy the grace of God and don't extend it to others. I'm going to carry it. It's mine. I'm offended by everything. I'm looking for another reason to be offended. Come on, I dare you. Cross me. I will pick up that offense in a second. Say, I won't. Say, I won't. 
Oh, you said I won't. I will. I got an extra hand. Come on, I can carry a fence all day long. I can hold on to grudges as long as you can. You, you can't even believe how long I can. And I'm carrying around an offense. And I'm wondering, I mean, I'm offended by that pastor. I can't believe he talked like that. I'm offended by the worship team. I'm offended because the music was too loud. I'm offended because it wasn't loud enough. I'm offended because it was too full. I'm offended because the, the, they didn't say hi to me. Can you believe Sally did not wave at me? And I'm offended by that. And I'm upset by it. And so I'm going to carry an offense. And you don't realize something is that you're always carrying another offense and another offense and another offense. And, and we think offenses are no big deal. But I love this. Stephen Furtick says this. The devil, his agenda is destruction. The Bible says this. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and destroy, right? We know this. The, the, the devil's agenda is destruction. Listen to this. He has a strategy, and his strategy is division. Because the Bible says this, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if he can divide your marriage, come on, he's got you. If he can divide you from friendships, he's got you. Come on. If he can divide you from a church, he's got you. And here's the deal is that he uses a tactic, and the tactic is offense. Because offense doesn't look like a big deal. But can I tell you this, that traps don't look like traps to the, per the thing that it's meant to catch. Come on, you could walk by a mouse trap and go, I ain't putting my hand in that. I ain't putting my, I ain't doing nothing. I'm, I'm going to walk around that. But here's the thing, is to a mouse, it looks like good food. And you're walking around picking up offenses because it looks good to you. And it's my right. And I should be able to hold on to this if I want to hold on to it. And you don't understand who I am. Who do you think you are? I'm going to carry this offense. And traps don't look like traps to the thing that it's meant to catch. If, if every trap the devil set for you had a, craw, a skull and crossbones on it and said destroy ahead with a flashing red light, I think you would probably sidestep it. But since it looks like she didn't say hi, or they said, or I got overlooked, or what, I'm going to pick up this offense, and I'm going to let it weigh me down over time, and I can't run the race that God set before me, and I can't do what God has called me to do, because I'm offended. Yeah. You leave every church you've ever been a part of that's made a difference in your life because somebody at some point offends you. And, and the enemy has separated you from people who have made a difference in your life because they didn't do exactly what you wanted them to do, and that offends me. And you don't even see the trap. You don't even see what he's trying to do. He's trying to divide you. Here's the thing. is a zebra by itself. It's still a zebra. But it is so much stronger in a pack. Right. And the enemy is trying to divide you because he knows this. If I can isolate you, I can, affect, I can take you out from your calling. I can keep you from running after what God has called you to do. And the enemy is dividing you so he can destroy you. Yes. But it all comes through a little thing called offense. And here's the thing is that offense will slowly change the way you see everyone and everything. Because yeah. I don't see the right way. I see everything through offense. Yeah. So when somebody approaches me, now I look at that relationship through the offense. Right. Yeah. Wow. And I can't go to community groups because wow. my last church. Wow. And I can't trust your pastor because wow. my last church. carrying offense. Can I tell you today, I, I, I just feel this so strong. I want you to know that your life is too short and your calling is too great to live your life offended. Your life is too short and your calling is too great to live your life offended. Listen to this. In, in, uh, in Proverbs 19 verse 11, it says this, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. What God is saying here is that it's more for you than it is for them. It's for your glory to overlook an offense. It's for your glory to say, you know what, I'm choosing to go beyond that. And overlooking an offense is not doing that. It's not saying what they did was right. It's not saying that what they did didn't affect you. Because I still, got, I still had ruts in my front yard. 
It's not saying that it didn't hurt. Right. It's not saying that it did, you, you're not walking away with a little bit of a limp. It's not saying those things. But here's the deal. It's what it's saying is, is to overlook an offense is your glory. And so what I do when I overlook an offense is I see the offense and I know that it's there, but I choose to look up and I look to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith. And I know that I could take up this offense and I know that I could look at this offense over and over and over again, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look to Jesus because I know this, my life is too short. My calling is too great to live my life carrying something so small. Small people carry big offenses. You've got to get to a point to where we overlook the offense. I love this quote. It says this, whenever anyone offends me, I try to raise my soul so high that the offense cannot reach it. Whenever anyone offends me. Come on, can I tell you that offense is looking for you all the time? Anytime anyone offends me, I'm going to raise my soul so high that it cannot that I rise above it. Can I give you a couple of things real quick? I gotta hurry. Number one, with God's help, we can get over being offended easily. With God's help, we can get over being easily offended, okay? Uh, in, in Ephesians 4, verse 2, it says this Always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Listen, make allowance for each other's faults. See, when I realize that I have faults, it makes it easier for me to love somebody else through theirs. Wow. And I'm still trying to learn this, and it's a hard lesson to learn, but I'm starting to figure it out. I'm nearly 40, and I'm starting to realize that everything is not about me. Wow. Some of y'all just got some heavy revy right there. Just dropped something. <laughs> Can I just tell you, everything in life is not about you. So the road rage, even though you were there, it wasn't about you. And the rude comment that she made was, you were there and it was to you, but it really wasn't about you. And the, ang the anger outburst wasn't really about you. And all of these things that are going on weren't really about you. And now you're sitting back going, well, this is about me. And this is what they did to me. And we think that it's about you. And you have an opportunity here. I can pick up an offense and I can choose to carry it around. Or how about this as Christians, because we've, ex we've received God's grace. Why don't we pick up a phone and say, hey, are you okay? Is everything going all right in your life? Do are, are, you need anything from me? How can I pray for you? How how can, how can I help you get over it? But here's the thing is that most of us say this. No, you don't understand. I'm going to pick up an offense. My dad always told me this. He said this. If anybody ever acts out of character, assume that something else is going on in their life. But we like to assume the worst because here's the thing is that we judge everybody else on their actions and we judge ourselves on our intentions. Somebody steps out of line, well, you did this, and now I'm offended by it. And the truth is, is that we step out of line, and we say, well, I didn't mean it. Yeah. Right. Come on. Come on. Wow. Assume that if anybody acts out of character, that something else is going yeah. on in their life, because life is too short. Yeah. My calling is too great to live my life offended. The best way that we can get over offense easily is by dealing with offense quickly. Deal with it quickly. That doesn't mean take your revenge quickly. Some of you are like, okay, well, I just, oh, oh, I got you. As soon as they do it, pow, done. No. Get over it. Let it go quickly. The best way to get over it easily is to deal with it quickly. I broke my pinky uh, when I was in high school. And here's the thing is that I just let it go. I went to bed, went to sleep, no, didn't say anything to my mom. And I went to school the next day. And my hand was all swollen. And it was black and blue. And I, I went to school like whatever. And my teacher saw it. She called my mom. My mom came up there. She took me to the doctor. And the doctor said this. If you wouldn't have come in today, I would have had to re-break your finger. That does not sound good. <laughs> what this is, is it's something little. But little things become big things if they're not dealt with quickly. And it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. The longer you carry, it doesn't matter how small the weight is. The heavier it feels, the longer you carry it. And when you deal with it quickly and you let it go quickly, then God can move you on onto his promises and do everything that God has called you to do. Here's the thing. Offense gives birth to anger. Anger gives birth to resentment. Resentment gives birth to unforgiveness. Come on. Unforgiveness gives birth to hate. 
but it's just a little thing. But now I look at them and I hate them. I can't stand them. Can I tell you that your marriages would be so much better if you learned to let it go quickly? Your relationships would be so much better if you learned to let it go quickly. I'm overlooking an offense, not because it didn't happen, but because I am the bigger person. I'm not gonna, I, my life is too short and my calling is too great to hold on to anything that would offend me. And I'm choosing to let it go. I'm choosing to overlook it. Can I hear an amen? amen. Number two, with God's help, we can get over the big offenses too. What you're talking about, small potatoes, man. You don't understand. I got something big. You got a brick. I got a boulder. I can't get over it. Colossians 3.13 kind of deals with that. It says, make allowance for each other's faults. Here we go again. Forgive anyone. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you so you can forgive others if you feel like it. That's, that's called cafeteria Christianity. No, I, I want some of that, but I don't want any of that. No, don't talk to me about that grace stuff, man. Don't talk to me about that. I'll take all of God's forgiveness. Pile it on, baby. So you must forgive others. I got to forgive. Here's the thing is I don't let go of offenses because I'm good. I let go of offenses because God has been so good to me. And how do I hold on to some small fault and some small mistake and some small offense that somebody else did? Because in the grand scheme of things, when I think about all that God has forgiven me of, because I wake up every day and the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. And every day I wake up with a clean, fresh slate. How can I hold on to something so small? When God's forgiven me of so much. I forgive others because God has forgiven me of so much. So many great things has God forgiven me of. Now here's the thing is that you can do one of two things with offense, big or small. You can rehearse it. When you rehearse it, you get to hold it. You get to pet it. You get to talk about it. Come on, you go to work and show and tell. Come on, last time I checked, only kids do show and tell. Wow, come on. Yes. And I get to pull it out every now and then. I get to show, and I get to go to bed with it, with it sleeping on my chest. I love my offense. You can rehearse it. And if you, get, if you rehearse it, you get to hold it. Or you can release it. And here's the thing is that when I let go of an offense, my hands are free. And I can grab a hold of everything that God has for me. I'm not holding on to an offense. See, you can't hold something and grab a hold of something else. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather let go of an offense and not hold on to an offense and grab a hold of all of God's promises and then all that God has had for me. Why? Because my life is too short and my calling is too great to hold on to an offense. There's no greater person that ever did this than Jesus. Hanging on a cross. Surrounded by the people that put him there. He says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. God, right now in this moment, I'm overlooking the offense. God, right now in this moment, I'm getting over it. God, right now in this moment, I refuse to carry it. I'm moving on. Because my life is too short. My calling is too great. What you put me on this earth to do is too big to carry an offense for the people around me. So I'm letting it go. And if God says, Jesus says, in this moment I do it, why can't we do it? It's time to let it go. It's time to move on. 
It's time to grab a hold of something different. And that something different is a calling. That something different is a, is a reason to get up in the morning. And I'm not going to live my life holding on to something so small. Here's the thing is letting go of an offense won't change your past. When I put it down, it's still there. But letting go of an offense will change your future. Because if I, as I put it down, it doesn't follow me. And I can move into every relationship knowing that I'm not carrying an offense. I'm not looking through the eyes of an offense. With God's help, we can get over being easily offended. With God's help, we can get over the big offenses too. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, I just thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, I thank you that you can help us get over the big things. Lord, you know every person that walked in here. Lord, you know what they've been through. You know the struggles in their life. You know the things that they've gone through. Lord, I don't know that. But you do. Lord, the betrayals, the hurts, the pains. Lord, right now I thank you in this moment that we choose to overlook the offense. God, I pray right now that you give the people strength to overlook an offense. Because they realize that life is too short. Their calling is too great to live their life offended. With every head bowed, every eye still closed, maybe in this place and you don't know Jesus. You never asked him into your heart. You never asked him to be the Lord of your life. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship with a God who loves you. A God that forgave every offense even before you did anything for him. That grace is yours today. All you have to do is say yes. Maybe you're in this place and you say, Brian, I prayed that prayer, but I've walked away. Maybe some of you walked away because something a pastor did that offended you. Something a church did. You walked away from your relationship with God. Today's a great day to rededicate your life to Jesus. Say, I'm letting go of the offense. And I'm coming back to God. Maybe some of you are offended at God. Because the situation didn't work out like you thought it was going to work out. Today's a great day to let it go. Come back into relationship with God. With every head bowed, every eye closed. I won't embarrass you. Say, that's me. I'm going to count to three. Just slip your hand up and put it right back down. We're going to pray a prayer together. Say, Brian, I need Jesus in my life for the first time. I'm rededicating my life to Jesus. One, two, three. Just boldly put your hand up. Put it right back down. Amen, 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 amen. I see those hands. Amen. Can we pray this prayer together as a church family? Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Take my sin. And by your grace, I take your righteousness. I make you the Lord of my life. I give you all that I am. I hold nothing back. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for every person that prayed that prayer. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, do us a big favor. Stop by our connect table on your way out. Just let somebody know, hey, I rededicated my life or I gave my life to Jesus for the first time. We want to celebrate with you and give you whatever you need as you begin this incredible journey of faith. Oh, my goodness. That was such a great word today. Can you all give it up for Pastor Brian? Isn't he awesome? I told him, I was like, if there's one message that the the global church needs, it's that one right there. I was like, if there's one message that Crystal Sparks needs, it's that one right there. It was so good. It's going to be on replay in my house for a while. Well, hey, if you're here joining us for the first time and you haven't done so already, this is a great opportunity for you to text the keyword, hey, to 903-634-7135. And right after service, we'd love to meet you at our connect table, put a free gift in your hand and answer any questions.
questions that you might have. Um, well, we're going into our time of giving. This is our time to bring our tithes and our offering into God's house. And I love hearing people's stories about them trusting God in the area of their finances. And recently, a member of our dream team uh, chose to trust God in the area of the tithe. And in doing so, he knew that by tithing, he was saying no to his family vacation, that they wouldn't be able to pay for it. But they decided to put God first place. And so it's been over a month now that they've been giving faithfully. And he said this last week, down to the penny, what they needed for their family vacation, they had an unexpected check, a bonus from their work. Come on, and it covered everything he needed for his family vacation. Isn't that amazing? And I say that to say this, that God says, try me now in this. And I love in Proverbs eleven twenty five, 25, it says that he who waters others will himself be watered also. I want to tell you that when you put God first place, he makes sure to take care of everything, all your wants and your needs. You know, here at One Church, you guys are the most generous people. And last week we talked about how we paid off the debt uh, for students at Cattle Mills ISD of their lunch debt that they had. And then we also paid off the fourth and fifth grade in Sulphur Springs ISD and that was just from you guys' generosity but we were challenging you guys to, for us to sponsor 217 students uh, for our summer backpack feeding program. We're going to sponsor these kids send them home with nutritious food make sure that they're taken care of and then midway through the summer they can come back and refill their backpack and you guys are so generous that every single child got sponsored last week isn't that amazing? Thank you, Jesus. It's so awesome. And so they're going to have great food to eat. And that's because of your generosity. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I think Jesus is so proud of what we're doing here. And that, man, it means a lot to those kids. And so a few announcements for you guys. First one is we have Summer at One Church coming up on June the 2nd. And what is Summer at One Church? It's just a lot of fun. Every single week we have something new, different happening here at the church. And so you don't want to miss out from face painting to snow cone trucks to all kinds of things. We have a lot of fun during summer at One Church. Also want to let you know, if you have not signed up to lead or host a group, today's a great day to do it. And it's so easy to be a group leader. Literally, it's just saying for six weeks, I'm going to open up my home or I'm going to go to somebody else's home. I'm going to meet at Starbucks and I'm just going to go on a journey with people in my life. And it's so fun. I love groups and my life has changed through groups. So we'd love for you to sign up if you haven't done so already. So with all that said, will you take your gift in your hand if you're giving online. Can you put your phone in your hand? And I'd love to pray for you as we give to God. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we can trust you in the area of our finances. That God, I thank you that your word said in Proverbs eleven twenty five 25, that if we water others, we ourselves will be watered. And so Father, I thank you that you see every need, you know every situation, every circumstance. And God, I thank you that as they put you first place, that Lord, every need that they have is met in Jesus' name. And everybody who believed it said, amen, amen. Well, let's stand on our feet. Let's worship one more time together as we close out our service.
At One Church, we aim to help you encounter Jesus. If God is using this ministry to impact your life, join us by investing in others today. You can go to IamOneChurch.com/give. Thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great week.